Hey YouTube, Irish Air Gunner coming at you. If you watched my previous videos about using SCBA bottles to charge a PCP air rifle, uh, I told you that you could build your own adapter for under $50. Well, a couple people have sent me messages and inquired, and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how to build your own air adapter. As you can see, using the uh, adapter that you're going to build to do, attach to your SCBA bottle, uh, you're going to need a couple of things and we'll go over all the parts. And with the SCBA system that I use here, uh, the commercial adapters are about $150. Now, like I said, if you can build yours for around $50, that saves $100 that you can apply towards a scope or pellets or, or something other than purchasing the equipment. So here we go. So now let's put everything together. You have your you have your four way. I took the liberty. The other thing you're going to need is regular standard pipe tape. You can buy this at Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart for 99 cents. I mean it's really cheap. And a pair of scissors because I want to cut. I usually cut the the tape instead of tearing it. That way you don't have little strips. The other thing is when you apply the tape to, the, you don't want to get any over the moving parts. You want to make sure it's all on the thread. You don't want to get any that sticks out because when you thread it in, it'll cut. And if that little piece of tape gets blown through the system, once you pressurize it and gets into your PCP, those valves are really small. You can clog the valves. So that's why it's really important to make sure you put the tape, if you can see, the tape is completely around the threads and not on any of the moving parts where it's going to be cut. The other thing you want to do is you want to blow this out either with an air hose or you can even use your, your mouth to just blow it out and get the little pieces of tape, if you can see like this little remnants of tape in there, you want to make sure that they're all cleaned out before you put your system in. If you can see I just blew on it and this is the little piece of tape that came out. You want to make sure that it's all out before you put your system together. There you go. Let's start off with the SCBA tamp there. This is a th uh, 396, I believe the number is, Scott air bottle adapter. What you do with this is you put this threaded end through. This is what goes into your fill adapter, and this is what goes onto your bottle. It's standard Scott adapter. It's compatible. So this is the same thing that the air systems that firefighters use to breathe it goes into their system when they plug the bottle in. So all you do is you get your valve, you just pick a side, and you put your valve in. When you put these parts together, you want to make sure that you use a wrench. And you just use adjustable wrenches. When you tighten these, you want to tighten them to the point where they're hand tight. And then you, once they're tight, you want to take them and you want to snug them down. And once you get resistance like that, and it's really hard to turn, and you feel you can't go anymore, you want to give it like a little eighth of an inch small turn, one sixteenth of an inch turn, and it's, and it's secure. So now we have our adapter that goes into our air bottle. The next thing you want to do is you want to adapt. You want to put your gauge on. I don't want to have this because I'll be taking it off after the video. Once you put it on, you do the same thing. And you want it facing forward to you, so what you do is you tighten it down. And when you're tightening it, you have to make sure that your tape's good. And when you bring it around, you bring it to the point where it stops. And make sure it's tight so you don't have any leaks. So it's facing you. Now, let's go with our bleed valve. We had to go with a quarter inch adapter to one eighth. So it's the same thing. Once you put this in, you thread it in hand tight. Then you put your wrench to it, and you put the adapter on. Once you put the adapter on, same thing. You tighten it down to the point where it's snug. And once it's snug, you don't want to over-tighten it. A little short turn, and it's secure. The thing about this is you have to remember is this is made out of soft metal. This is soft metal. So if you over-tighten it, you can stretch and expand the threads, and that way you'll get leaks. So you don't want to over tighten it, you want to leave the system snug. So now that we have our system for our reducer, we take our bleeder screw. The bleeder screw is pretty much a screw valve with a little hole 
once you release the air, you use a screwdriver to release the screw and the air will back up. Once we do that, we put our screw valve in, hand tight, same thing as before, the adjustable wrench, and you're going to have to go smaller because your, your leader screw is smaller, you tighten it in. And same system, you don't want to over tighten it. Once you're snug, you want to give it just a little bit of a turn just to make sure that you're tight. And once you're tight, you're tight. And your bleeder valve is in. And the next thing you want to do after you have that is you have your hose. Your hose will come with 1 8 inch threads on both ends. So what you have to do is you have to get on, you, on eBay or a hobby shop, find the 1 8 inch quick connects. They'll come in a pair. They'll come a male and a female. So you take the male end that would go in here and just put it in your storage, but the female end will go on this end. So once you're done with that, you're going to need another adapter because this is eighth inch and that's a quarter inch and same thing as before hand tight until you get it to turn and one little turn there you go, once it's snug That's in, and same thing. You would, I'll be taking this up, but you'd have your tape around your hose. Once you have your tape around your hose, you tighten it up, hand tight, and after you tighten it, and once you have it hand tight, the same thing. You just turn it till it's snug, and once it's snug, you just give it a little bit more of a turn. And there you go. You have your PCP charging system. This then goes into an air bottle, and this goes to your gun. All right, we're back with our bottle. We have our bottle and we have our charging system that we just made. So all you basically do now is you take the bottle, you put your STBA adapter that's compatible with the Scott Air Packs. And if you're not running Scott, you're running MSA or a different Air Pack company, then you're going to have to find a threaded piece that, that'll adapt to their, to their bottles. Make sure you thread it correct because these threads are very thin and these threads are very fine. So if you cross thread it, you'll ruin the bottle and you'll have to start from scratch. Like I said, once you get this bottle on, this adapter on, then you're going to have to tighten it. And when you tighten it down, you don't have to overly manually tighten it, but you just hold it and you just give it a turn until you get it snug and there you go. Not real tight, not real loose. And that way the system doesn't move. And how you fill the bottle with this is you can see there's the gauge for the air bottle on how much you have. Roughly on this bottle I have about 3800 PSI. So obviously there's no on and off valve. So once you connect this, once you turn the air on, it's going to come out the hose. So basically if you have this connected to your gun, when you turn it on it won't leak throughout the system. And that's what you'll have to check. When you turn these on, there's a push valve. You put turn, you push and you turn and you twist and you'll hear a click. Now you can turn your air on. When you turn your air on, you'll hear it come out. And you'll hear it coming out the hose. Listen, and there's no leaks. Once you connect to this to your gun, you fill up your gun, you do it really slow, as you can hear. And once you fill up your gun, watching this gauge, once you fill your gauge up, your gun up to your standard PSI, the 2900, 3000, whatever it is, you slowly shut it back off and you're done. Once you're done with that, you make sure your air ball is completely shut off. Then you take a screwdriver and you, dis and you put the screwdriver in your bleeder valve and turn your bleeder valve counterclockwise. It'll bleed off the air in the system from the gun. Then you can disconnect your gun. That's it.
Thank you folks for watching. Remember our share gunner. If you like, please rate, please subscribe, please comment. I love to hear your comments and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.